Let's paint reflective black armor today. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel, collectors. So, you are painting black armor that's reflective for Black Templar or Scissors of Battle. So, this is the video for you. Alright. So, for painting black armor, you want to make sure that uh, you just don't, don't use black and white only. You want to make sure that you use a variety of colors, not only to portray the environment, but also to show that the armor is actually black. For this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a bit of a uh, a red oxide to portray that there's there's a bit of a brown environment brown atmosphere and a little bit of teal turquoise colors dark sea green to show that yes there's still a blue sky and the black armor is reflecting all of these things so these little nuances will be done in this black armor video so if you're ready let us begin all right so we're going to start the black armor by adding a bit of uh, dark sea green from vallejo and Chimera Black mix them together to create uh, the first highlight the initial base coat is already done using Mr. Hobby 1500 uh, spray can alright so as I mentioned the shape of the highlight is going to be very very important and yep we're gonna place the first highlight and at this stage, we need to start to be pretty careful already. While you have, uh, while mistakes can be made, you can easily use a black color to to finesse up the shapes a little bit. Okay. So as you guys can see right here, I'm lighting the model more towards uh, a main key light from the left side. So you need to take into consideration what shapes the components you are painting are. So say for example, the chest armor is comprised of a cylinder and two spheres. And the back armor is comprised of a cylinder and also two spheres. Right, so this is the result. Next, I'm going to make a, uh, a further highlight. I think a bit more dark sea green into this. And then next, I'm also adding in a little bit of uh, Vallejo Ivory to create a saturated color, a set, the more saturated color of dark sea green. Okay. So I'm just going to place a highlight very carefully within the area. I'm also going to take note that because I'm painting glossy black armor, I'm going to be making the highlights a little bit larger. Okay, At this stage, you want to make sure that your brush is dry. The previous brush stroke wasn't very good. So I dried the brush a little bit so that I can control the brush a little bit more. And yeah. This is how you want it. So at this stage, you also want to control the shapes very very carefully. What do I mean by control the shapes? You don't want to just paint straight lines and you don't want to just paint uh, say for example a straight line down the side of this drip cage. You want to make sure that it follows the form of the, the miniature and hence it will communicate what shape and size the miniature is. Okay. So while the chest armor is also made of the two spheres near the breast, you want to make sure that um, it just doesn't you don't paint it just as 
uh, sphere, you want to make sure that you communicate the sternum and then the collarbone area also. So right here, this is the result of this stage and we can move on to the next stage really. So at this stage, you can see that um, the highlights are still placed very well within the previous highlights. And right now, I'm making a desaturated version. As you guys can see, I'm using ivory with black. Mixed into a grey and just a touch of uh, the dark sea green. And I'm going to start making a highlight here. This highlight is going to be a little bit more drastic. At this stage, it will look drastic, but in the later stages, we will clean it up. So as I mentioned before, the shapes are really very important. So you got to make sure that the shapes are very, very strictly adhered to. This is unlike how I painted gas glue because uh, right now we got to make sure that the shapes are as neat as possible. If you guys notice, I sometimes go back and forth with the previous color to smoothen out the blends and to correct the shapes and to sharpen the lines also. One important thing about painting non-metallic metals is sharpening the lines. So if for example you have an you have a highlight under the knee, you want to make sure that the, the shape is very sharp. So you have a very clean edge to demarcate the non-metallic metal material. At this stage, I'm not focusing on the reflected light yet. As you guys can see later, I'm gonna give you guys a little surprise to see how the reflected light is made. Right now with this color, I'm also starting to pick up very little details because these little details sort of like the rim under the breast and uh, the little wrinkles on the hip area this give more uh, idea about what material the armor is made of Okay, moving on I'm making a super high value, low saturation uh, dark sea green So this will start to make the metal pop. At this stage, it might look like the black armor is starting to look like silver armor, which we will fix in the later stages. You can just fix it to taste. But right now, you can really see that the armor is popping once you place a very high value highlight. Take note, just remember the shapes are still very important and you gotta be very careful with this.
So this is the result for this stage. As you can see, the armor is getting very shiny already. We'll be moving on to using uh, white and a bit a touch of orange for the highest highlights. You just want to make sure there's a very faint touch of orange in this. It's almost not visible, but why I use a touch of orange is to make sure that the entire miniature, the, the highest highlight still has a little bit of color in it. And then it contrasts against the cool base that we have just created. As you guys can see right now, while shapes are very important, I'm very selective of where I place these highlights. I don't place it all over the place. Right, this is the final result and we will soon be cleaning up. Now we are going to add in the reflected lights. So using dark sea green and a bit of red oxide, we are going to create this intermediate color. And this will help to inform the viewer of the missing shapes. What do I call the missing shapes? So say for example, under this knee, uh, it wasn't previously well illustrated what form it is. We're going to use a little bit of this warm color to start to illustrate how this entire shape looks. So you have spent a lot of time in the highlights, now we're going to spend equally as much time in the shadows. So this is the final effect for this stage. I'm going to create an even higher highlight now. So using more, more of the red oxide, I'm going to start creating some highlights now. So remember the shape is very important just want to make sure that these highlights are placed within the previous stage so for the final stages where you want to make sure the the shapes are correct what i'm using i'm just using a glaze of dark sea green mixed in with a bit of black to just make sure that the areas in the shadows are really a very very deep black this really ensures that uh, the miniature looks as uh, deep black as possible and we'll be showing you the final result in just a little bit So this is the final result for the first draft. As you can see some of the edges are not very well defined yet. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit more. Basically we're just going back and forth with the glazers to refine the shapes. And this is the final result. So what do you think of this technique? Let me know in the comments below. Why are you going to paint with this black armor? Just let me know in the comments below and 
If possible, I would like to answer these comments. There's only one of me and yes, I would want to answer most of your comments and yeah, ask me questions. Okay? So if you found this video useful, you really helped me a lot. Please like, subscribe, please share it on Facebook or whatever social media you have. And if you really want to support the channel, please head on to our Patreon. The Patreon links are below. Alright? Uh, become a Patreon today. So um, yeah, Patreon gives me some income and allows us to keep producing awesome content like this so that everyone gets to become a better painter together. Patreons, thank you. And uh, you guys get early access to many of my videos and a lot of exclusive content and you guys get to interact with me. And together we can build a community where we can become better painters together. Okay, so I'm gonna be doing another tutorial also showing you guys how I do the syringe on the hospitaler. So thanks for staying all the way here. And I'll see you in the next video. See you guys.